Hi, my name is Tony Single and I'm part of the team that developed Single Shot, a drone based weed mapping system for spot spraying. While I'm kept busy running our family farm business, I invested time in Single Shot knowing how important it would be to the continued profitability and sustainability of our cropping enterprise. Tigar Farming is based in Narradigar, east of Canamble, New South Wales, where we have a 4,500 hectare dryland cropping enterprise. Typical of our region, Narradigar has heavy clay soils with a high water holding capacity, and this means that fallow maintenance is critical to our business. In our full zero-till system, the reality is we're exclusively reliant on herbicides to control weeds. About 10 years ago, we first had glyphosate-resistant barnyard grass identified, and we'd already been dealing with glyphosate-resistant ryegrass since 2005. On top of all that, we had feathertop roads grass encroaching, blow-away grass, fleabane were becoming increasingly problems, and milk thistles were getting harder to kill. So my father, John and I, were worried about the, the sustainability of zero tillage systems on our farm and went looking for tools to cost effectively manage these weeds in a way that would drive down the weed seed bank while maintaining the cost effectiveness of weed control in our business. At the time, we felt that there wasn't anything on the market to effectively achieve this goal. So this led our family, led, my, led by my brother Ben, who's a mechanical engineer, down the path of developing our own solution, Single Shot, a drone-based weed mapping technology that enables spot spraying, which I'll speak about in this presentation. So this picture here shows what the product is, along with a full software suite that ties it all together. So, the, the technology that we've developed is encapsulated in the sensor itself and the sensor is designed to be able to um, go on to any drone that's capable of carrying the payload. So you can think of the drone itself as just a tractor in this system. So then the next step is, the next thing I want to look at is how do we, um, what's the full process of, of um, flying a paddock right through to creating a spray map. So obviously the first step then is to go out and fly the paddock. That, that's a matter of uploading a predefined path to the drone um, such that the drone will, tr will travel at 45 kilometres an hour on a swath width of 70 minutes with flight times of 40 to 45 minutes per battery change. So with all that taken into account, it's very feasible to average about 200 hectares an hour in a full day's flying. So we're talking about 15 to 1600 hectares of coverage per day. The sensor does need um, a, a base station recording during the flight duration, but you don't need a live link to the drone. This information is brought in later through the process. And if the correction source is different to the correction source being used by the boom or the tractor, there is a simple one-off process in the software to marry the two systems up. So once you've captured the data, the next step is to process it just on a standard Windows laptop. An internet connection is required, but you only really need minimal amounts of upload and download data. And we've found that our MBN SkyMaster satellite connection is more than adequate for this purpose. The data can be processed in the same day as you flew the paddock, and the processing takes less time than it does to fly the paddock. The final step then is to select your weed sensitivity and go through and generate your prescription of coverage map. Part of this process is that the program will calculate the area of the paddock that you're going to spray based on the setup of your boom. And the beauty of this setup then is that you can go back and change your weed sensitivity and within a couple of minutes you'll have answers in terms of how that's going to affect the area of the paddock you're going to spray. So once you're happy with what weed sensitivity you're going to use relative to the area you're going to spray, you take your prescription of coverage map out to the tractor, upload it into the GPS section controller, then you're ready to go out and spot spray. So as a rule of thumb, we're picking up weeds down to the size of the top of a beer can extremely consistently. So these are all examples on the screen now of weeds that we've been able to successfully detect in the day-to-day -day use of this product. The first example I want to highlight here is the picture on the left. The system is particularly good at picking up weeds in heavy, tall stubble, based on the fact that um, when the photograph of these weeds is taken, the sensor is looking directly down over the top of the weeds, and we're working on double overlap, so that if a weed did happen to be occluded in the first shot, um, 
the second shot will be from a slightly different angle when you're much likely to see it in at least one of those shots and get a positive ID. Uh, the other example I want to point out here too is that there's a weed on the right. As you can see, it's a piece of wire weed with um, virtually no leaves, just a couple of green stems. The multi-level multi NDVI based algorithm is particularly effective at being able to distinguish between dead and live plant material. And in this example, it hasn't had any problems at all in picking up this um, piece of wire weed as a positive detection. So moving on, what are the advantages of drone based weed mapping? And to me, the really critical piece of information is knowing what area of the paddock you're going to spray before you even drive the spray rig in there or mix your chemical. So first of all, you can choose how you're going to spray, whether or not that be a blanket application versus spot only, or it might be a combination of both. And it really is amazing how many times there are more weeds in the paddock than you thought they were, and that results in a significant change in terms of how you're going to control those weeds and what operation you're going to undertake. The simple things, you know how much chemical to, to order and mix in, in your brew, and you can legally utilise optical spot spray lakes on, on labels that dictate you can only use x rate up to the amount of paddock you're going to spray. One drone can service multiple spray rigs, so it's particularly effective at scale and particularly effective for contract work. So if I use our enterprise as an example, for us to cover our 4,500 hectares in summer with two 36 metre spray rigs, we're looking at about eight pretty solid days of spraying. In terms of flying that area, it only takes us about three. You're not limited by nozzle choice or application rates, and there are no problems in terms of meeting labelled spray quality, such as extremely coarse for 2,4-D products. You can use one drone pass multiple times, whether or not that be in the case of a double knock, or on the flip side of that, you might want to combine every pass over a paddock from a season into a single map that you can then use as a pre-emergent map prior to the beginning of the next season. For the cost of running the drone over, this, over, over the paddock, it's very feasible to go out and just simply scout for survivors after brown out of an application. And of course, if you do find survivors, well, you've got an actionable map to be able to go out and do something with these weeds. And you can utilise existing booms for spot spraying with limited or in some cases no modifications at all. And you certainly don't need a dedicated optical spot spray machine. So they're the key advantages to me in terms of this product. What I want to go into now is how we're using this product in our systems in terms of leading to more sustainable weed management. And the first, um, first parameter I wanted out of this product is highly consistent weed detection. So my ultimate aim here is to move as close as possible to 100% weed control before seed set. So that if I'm using this product to go out and target weeds that might be close to setting seed, I need to know with 100% certainty that the system is going to pick that weed up and it's not going to miss it and it's not going to go through and set seed. And so the ultimate aim here is to drive down the seed bank and over a number of years we're looking for a snowball effect where every year we're chasing less and less weeds and our weed control just becomes more effective, more cost effective. At the same time, I don't want to dramatically increase the number of passes we're making um, over a paddock through a season compared to a conventional spraying program. So I don't want to create a painting the harbour bridge effect where you go through spot spray your whole place and then have to turn around and start at the first paddock again to go back and pick up your misses. So that all goes to the requirement for highly consistent weed detection. The, the second um, point I'd make in terms of sustainable weed management is um, I want to increase the diversity of herbicides that I'm using in my system. And the key, key for me in this is knowing what percentage of the paddock you're going to spray before you go out there. So then when I know that I'm going to spray 10% of the paddock, I can, I'm then very happy to utilise a chemical mixture that's $50 per hectare, knowing that it's going to average out at $5 per hectare. And that, and that enables the use of novel and expensive modes of actions um, herbicides that you wouldn't normally use in a conventional spot spraying system and to me that's critical to reduce the reliance of glyphosate. I also want to minimise the sublethal doses of, on large weeds that you might normally do in a conventional fallow spraying program. So 
the example I'd give is that you go and fly a paddock, it comes back at a relatively high spot spray rate that it might not be appropriate to spot spray at, at that level. So rather than throwing that map away, we can just simply increase the sensitivity so that we might pull our area to be sprayed back to 10, 15% and only target the really big weeds with, with a high rate and then target your um, blanket rate at a moderate rate targeting the rest of the weeds still in the paddock. And another key use pattern that I see um, in, our, in our situation is the ability to be able to map weeds immediately after a germinating event. So the consequence of that is that um, you get a rain event, we can go out and map our whole farm in three days before any new weeds are germinated. And then we can target any existing weeds in a spot spray application and at the same time do a simultaneous blanket application targeting only the new weeds that have emerged at a relatively moderate, moderate rate, A, resulting in savings, but B, giving us the ability to, to um, really target the existing weeds with high, high rates of herbicide and reducing, minimising the survivors in that application. So as with any new technology, there are always going to be barriers to adoption. And in this case, you certainly do need to plan ahead. So even though you can process a paddock in the same way that you've flown it, you obviously need to have these maps be prepared before you're spraying. So it's not a turnkey, it's not a turnkey solution where you can just drive the burn straight out of the shed. You do need to, for all intents and purposes, you do need to be licensed to fly a drone. There are some small exceptions, but um, the best course of action is to have a drone licence and they are available in easily accessible courses throughout Australia. Training is required to operate the system and of course you need to have a compatible GPS section controller GPS system and within the boom itself you need to be able to maintain rates with sections turning on and off briefly over individual weeds. In terms of future and ancillary uses, I guess the sky's the limit. So what I want to focus on today is the uses that we're working on now. And I'm sure there are a number of uses that we, we haven't thought of yet and that will pop up over time. But in terms of green on green, what we can do right now is we can effectively identify large surviving weeds in newly emerged crop, just purely through size discrimination. Another project we're looking at now also is being able to identify rows, weeds in between the rows of emerged of emerged crop. So you can see in this example here, we've developed um, the software to be able to detect the crop rows, and then any weeds, any plant material outside those crop rows can be identified as weeds and essentially go and spot spray these weeds. So the other purpose of this project here, well I've got it up too, is that we can measure the gappiness um, in cotton plant stands. Um, with the ultimate aim of going through and producing an algorithm to determine if it's economical to replant certain sections of the field. Um, just as a matter of, matter of course, the drone creates digital elevation models every time you fly across the paddock. So it's perfectly feasible to be able to use these digital elevation models for terrain mapping and then use this information in terms of irrigation, head ditch planning, etc. Another key use pattern I see for this technology in the future um, is that it can be the enabling technology for um, robots that are, are relatively slow to cover paddocks in terms of broad acre sense. So by knowing exactly where the, all the, every single weed is in a paddock, we can then apply the travelling salesman algorithm. So you can see in this picture here, we've, we've been able to, to join up every single weed in that paddock in the shortest possible path. So for, for a robot that might be carrying microwave, laser, steam, etc., depending where the future goes, all of a sudden it only has to cover a tiny portion of the paddock, which might be the difference between it being viable on a broad acre scale versus not. So finally to finish with, I just want to look at a case study of the savings that we've made on our farm to date and what we're looking to achieve in the future. So, Without any modifications to our two gold acres booms, so I'm talking about seven sections over 36 metres, and without valves that turn on and off instantly, um, we've sprayed 4,800 hectares, and over that area we've achieved an average saving of 79%. So then if you extrapolate an average chemical cost of $16 per hectare, it comes out at around $60,000 savings to date over 4,800 hectares. Um, 
what we what, what we've done now is that um, we've just added in a dedicated op, dedicated spot spray line onto one of our booms. So I'm talking about 18 sections over 36 meters with valves that turn on and off instantly. So we've been able to model model the effects of this on on the software. And in a real life example of a 189 hectare paddock that we've flown, we've been able to bring about another 35% chemical savings on top of what we've already been already been achieving. But I think the more important thing here is that we'll be able to dramatically increase the utilisation of this technology in that I don't see too many situations where we'll go out and spray a fallow without a weed map and and then being able to spot spray and blanket simultaneously. So A, we're um, increasing the levels of our chemical savings. Um, B, we're going to be doing it much more regularly. And on top of all that, we've got tools to be able to control these weeds in a much more sustainable manner. So I guess the net, net result of all that for me in our, in our situation is that we're going to have a much more sustainable future in terms of managing our fallows very cost effectively, which I think is an exciting thing. So just want to finish on, if you're looking for more information, you can go to the website www.singleagriculture.com.au or you can email us directly at info at singleagriculture.com.au. Thank you.